great magician. Your clothes are red! Of uh, the deck of cards here, I'm gonna riffle through the deck and I want you to try to memorize a card in the middle, not this bottom card here, but go ahead, try to see one. That might have been too fast, but yeah, try to just see one card that calls out to you. Think you got it? I'm going to teach you guys how to do this and basically take a card, you're thinking of one, and how to magically change it into the spectator's thought of Jack of Spades. Let's learn how to do it. What's going on guys, I'm Jerick120. This is Disturb Reality, teaching you how to be a magician, not just teaching you magic, the actual performance aspects that go into being a performer. First things first, wanna give a big shout out and extra love to the Russian genius who I actually saw do this snap color change on his channel. So if you guys haven't subscribed to him or given him some love yet, I see him leaving comments on Disturb Reality all the time. Great guy, very in-depth, skilled, sleight of hand stuff. So if you wanna see an even more advanced version of this, go hop over to the Russian Geniuses page and he has a modified snap change tutorial as well. Really quick before the tutorial, I just wanna let you guys know that if you wanna meet me, I will be in Marietta, Ohio this weekend wrestling for Remix Pro Wrestling. That's right, that's September 15th, this Saturday in the evening. So go hop over to Remix's Facebook page or their website. I'll leave links in the description if you guys can drive or make it to the area for this Saturday's wrestling show where I will be participating in the main event for the Remix Pro Championship Wrestling Championship. In the meantime, let's learn how to do this snap change. And if you guys wanna come hang out, you guys can show me how far along you've gotten in the few days since it's been. So when doing the snap change, this is essentially what it looks like. We know our traditional snap change starts like this and you put it at an angle, like a 30 degree angle like this, and you flick it. And in the flick, this card goes past the other one and that's how the traditional snap change works and it uses the guise of this flick this snap to cover up the snapping sound that it can make without it so when you add your finger to it like that it goes faster that was a very quick explanation for a different snap change that's the traditional snap change this snap change that we're learning is just a vertical wipe and it goes looks like this. I have my three fingers here. Just showing you what it looks like. I'll break it down in a minute. And it, it goes shh, boom to get that card behind there. And then obviously you're going to have to want to play with your angles, your covers, see what is going to expose this bottom card and what's going to hide it better. So that is on you to look in the mirror, to perform to a camera. Imagine if the lens to your camera is a set of eyeballs from your spectator. So put it at their height level, looking down at your card's organ, eye level, just like this, because when we do the snap change, it should be pretty spot on with their eyesight. So that's the quick rundown of it. Here's the real kind of like tutorial rundown of it. What you're going to do is you're going to take two cards. Now you can do a double lift. You can do whatever you want to get two cards. In this case, I like to do a push off double lift. That's my favorite. You can just as easily riffle through, get your break, turn these cards over, and somehow reorient the cards to where you're going to. For this, let's just take one step at a time. Let's just pretend you're a bare bones basic beginner who just wants to learn this snap change. What we're going to do is take two cards, we'll put them, align them as such, and on the back end, you're going to grip the cards with your thumb in this corner, in the lower right corner, and these three fingers, index, middle, ring, are going to grip down on the lower part, and your thumb's gonna be more or less so aligned with your middle finger between the three, and it's going to push towards the index finger. Your thumb is going to push towards the index finger while your middle and your ring finger pull backwards. So there's two things going on. These fingers, these middle two fingers, are pulling that first card back and away, and the thumb is pushing that card that's behind forward. So, that is the hardest thing people struggle with, is there's a lot going on in these muscles in your hand, actually, and you have to find the right grip to make it work. So, you start to push forward with your thumb, and then you peel back with these fingers and then you let your index finger just relax doesn't need to really grip anything 
and you're going to get to this breaking point. It's right when this card passes this card. I'm not at the breaking point yet. I'm trying, I'm trying, I have to push that thumb more. Push it, push it, push, push. And then curl these fingers in. You're essentially trying to, it's almost like a snap, like a snap change. I wonder, does snapping make it? Hey, and make it flick out. So when you're practicing, maybe try practicing as if you're snapping your fingers together. So all you really need to do is you're trying to get these fingers in the fleshy part of your thumb. Put, 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 put. Thankfully, this is a move that you actually can do relatively slow and it will still work. So slow, my index fingers are peeling away. My thumb is pushing forward. My fingers are trying to get to this fleshy part of my hand. I passed the breaking point, the clearing point, to where now all my job is, is to hide this card from behind to my spectator's eyes. Now that's going to be up to you to figure out where that moment in fact is. Because if I'm holding straight on, here's the change. Now, I don't know from your vantage point if this looks good, if it looks bad, I can pretty much guarantee you can't see this card from behind. It's blocked pretty good. But if I come over here, up, oh, it's exposed, up, oh, it's exposed, over, under. So it's gotta be dead on with your spectator's eyes. And now, normally when I'm performing tricks like this, like if I'm performing to one specific person, yeah, I want them to be right in front of me for this type of snap change. But I personally don't mind if the secret is exposed to other people. Let's say, I'm performing the magic trick to this person right here, and you happen to be a spectator watching, and there's another spectator over here. I can still go, all right, this wasn't your card, right? Let's take it, pretend like this is your card. Now I messed up on the snap change. I need to practice a little more. So you're watching from the left, another person's watching from the right, and my spectator's right here, and I do the snap change. I don't mind that, me personally, I don't mind that it got exposed to these people. It's almost like, a, Hey, we can be in on the secret together, bud. <laughs> this guy doesn't know, right? So that's what I like to do. I don't, what I mean is like, I don't care to expose one trick to a few people if it's only gonna happen like once in a blue moon. So don't be afraid to perform this and at the same time expose it for other people because that's part of the fun, is letting other people almost kind of see like, oh, I see what he did there, but that's interesting that that person doesn't know how he did it or what he did, but I know. I'm on the inside of the circle, I'm cool. He likes me. And we all just want to be liked after all, don't we? So you have your card here, and you have it in the finger grips, I told you. And it's always nice to align this card somehow before you do your final takeaway. So I make sure I have it aligned up somehow, some way. I get a nice, loose, yet firm grip on it to be sure I don't spread the cards. If you hold too tight, these cards are going to spread. If you hold them too loose, they'll spread. <laughs> so, you have to find just the right grip. And when the time's right, when you go to do your wipe over, you got to use your hand to cover that change. But because it happens so fast and the hand is quicker than the eye, no one should pick up on it. So I get my two cards, grip from where I need to grip to. And now with my thumb, I push forward. And with my ring and middle finger, I steal away, still pushing. And now my thumb and my index finger are starting to pinch each other. I'm holding on to this card with just these pinchers, right? Just my thumb and my index. So as you're doing this sliding motion, <laughs> You have a couple things to think about. The sliding motion, bring these cards here, right? Push this thumb from your middle finger towards your index finger. And then once it's pretty much past the break, the clearing point we talked about, you hold down with your pinchers. We're nice and relaxed to that one card. So as these peel, your thumb pushes forward. You got that nice pinch on, get your fingers to that fleshy part of your thumb and make sure to cover your angles. And then the last step is to simply learn when is the right time to do it. Because you don't want to start doing it too soon 
and obviously you don't want to start doing it too late. So with the perfect unison, you'll have to find the timing so you can make it happen right as that wave happens and make it so we don't have any kind of exposing happening. And the best way that you're going to do that with this or any other magic trick is to get a camera, use your iPhone, use your parents' camcorder. There's so many different ways to record video now. Record yourself doing this over a mirror. Video camera's always going to be better pair of eyes for you to know what you did right and wrong than a mirror ever will be. So start performing for a camera and then start performing for people and then start performing for people using a camera and then you're actually performing for the camera but also hiding angles to your spectator too. This is the natural motion. So when you're learning this, perform it for a camera to know how to do it correctly so you're ready to do it in the real world. If you guys wanna ask me any questions about this magic trick or any other magic trick or about magic in general or ask me anything, I'm going to be doing a live Twitch stream Sunday, September 23rd at 10 a.m. California time. That's 1 p.m. Eastern. Come hang out. That is Sunday, September 23rd. And I have a new tutorial for you guys coming out next week as well. Uh, in the meantime, you could hop over to twitch.tv slash Jericho120 and I'm probably playing right now if you guys wanna ask me any questions relating to this tutorial or you know, just come hang out, maybe play some video games, and hang out with uh, someone that teaches you magic and have fun. So how can you take this and apply it to an actual magic trick? So what I did in the beginning of this video is I riffled through the cards and told you to think of any card. Now, in this instance, I actually had two cards, two of the same cards, two jack of spades to make this work, and I simply peeled one down relatively kind of near the top. You can do it near the bottom, but I have one down and I actually take the card below it and I jog it down a little bit. So now there's a nice little spacing in the deck, okay? But it's completely impromptu. I didn't have to shave any cards. It's just like done. And now my hand covers it like this. So if you wanna do this to someone, basically what's going to happen now is this. I'm going to riffle through the cards and because this jog down card is here, it's going to make that Jack of Spades stand out even more as I riffle through it because it's skipping a card. It's like one card, one card, one card, one card, one card. Oh, skipped a card. So it makes you see that card for a brief second longer. And because I know where it is, I can kind of slow down when it happens so I can riffle through the deck. You probably only saw Jack of Spades and nothing else, but you could go slower and still at that same cadence that Jack of Spades still should significantly stand out. Um, and then that's again, just look at a camera, see how fast do I need to do it? How do I need to do it so every single time they pick the card I want them to? Now that card that we want them to is also on top of the deck. So what I can do is, we know it's in the middle, so I can take the top card, do a double lift, tell them now, obviously your card's somewhere in the middle, uh, just pretend that this is your card, okay? Because while it may look like the Three of Diamonds, it can also Oh, fail. This isn't your card, but if you look at it and you think about your card, this card can actually look just like your card. So then when it's time to clean this up, this is what you do. You're going to want to basically use this entire arm to block everything that's going on. There's a couple ways. You could just come over and kind of just clean it up and then do like a simple double lift. Uh, let's get back into that snap change position. I like to come over in front like this, and what I do is I put the top card on like that, and then put that card right, slide it right on top, just like that. And then from here, I can do another double lift, and they wouldn't think anything suspicious. And if you wanna get rid of it, just be like, here, let's take the three of diamonds, we'll put it in the middle of the deck, watch, make it jump to the top. So you just added another magic trick in order to get rid of the duplicate card, and now they have just this one free card that they can have and do whatever they with whatever they wish to do with. In fact, if you were here last week, for last week's tutorial, you would have seen that it was the bend the card brow pop-up move. So let's say in this situation, you have two duplicate cards, in this case our jack of spades. I'm gonna take our other jack of spades, put it back on top. And make sure to jog the card in front of it below. So 
if I riffle through the deck, we'll be able to see that card. And now this is all very sloppy. Do you see how much crap I'm going through to do this? If you want to make this easier for yourself, just pick the card that you want and put it on top, okay? And then lift however many cards you want up and just steal it off the top. And then you can push this card forward like this and then push this card back like that. And now you're in that same position to basically get it done. So instead of all that nagging, it's just boop, push it forward, slide this bottom card down, even the rest back out, and now here we are. And you can get that same kind of that we did earlier. So let's say you're here and you basically say, okay, I'm gonna rough through the deck. You go ahead, you see any card that you want. You can hear that difference. They saw the card that they wanted. Now let's take the next card down, the top card, and if I give it just a quick magical, here's the cleanup. And you can go right into another magic trick from here. You come over, pop, get a pinky break under these cards. So you come over, this pinky is gonna get a pinky break below these two cards. So it comes over, squares them up like that, got your pinky break, then you can turn them over as one card, <gasps> push it forward, bend this card, bend the two cards as one, put them into the middle of the deck, let them see that, square the deck up, do your magical gesture, and then card jumps from the middle to the top, and you're left with a clean card. So, that's it. Hope you guys uh, dug that. I'm Jarek120, this is Disturb Reality, teaching you how to be a magician, not just teaching you magic. And I have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Jarek120. If there's any merchandise that you'd like to get from Disturb Reality, you can visit disturbreality.com. Got my t-shirts there, a couple different ones you can pick from, and Disturb Reality playing cards as well. Subscribe to Disturb Reality if you haven't already, and hit that gosh freaking bell! feel like you guys don't even know when I upload videos anymore. I also have a huge announcement coming, so please make sure to hit that bell and you guys will be notified of when this huge announcement is coming. It's gonna be sooner than later. And it is a big, big, big passion project and I would love for you to be a part of it if you're willing, able, and wanting to because it, uh, it could uh, significantly change some lives, the people who decide to participate. So hit the bell to get notifications and subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you do both of those together in unison. They gotta work hand in hand. It's kind of a package deal. If you're gonna subscribe, you have to hit the bell button to get notified or else you'll never know. <sighs> and in the meantime, you can subscribe to me on Twitch if you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime account. You know, it's all linked. It's all super easy, sexy, flawless, and I will be playing video games right now. So hop over to twitch.tv because I will be sure that while you're watching this, I'll be streaming live on Twitch. So if you guys want to come hang out, then please do twitch.tv slash Jared one Much love, be inspired to learn, aspire to disturb, and always rise above. Mother